So now we're going to have our next presentation this afternoon, the final one of the day, followed by um, our very popular breakout rooms where you get a chance to uh, mingle with everyone that's spoken this afternoon and also with other people who have attended these sessions. So we do hope you'll take advantage of that. I must stress um, those sessions are not recorded at all. Um, so don't worry about that at all. They are intended to be entirely informal. So I'm going to introduce our final speaker of this afternoon, and that is Jenny Wright from Bibliographical Data Services. Um, Jenny is actually on our committee, um, so you would think I wouldn't have to read her bio, but I'm going to because I always do what I'm told. Um, <laughs> so Jenny is the Chief Metadata Officer at BDS. She is a member of the Metadata and Discovery Group Committee, like I just told you. She's IFLA's cataloging, um, also IFLA's Cataloging Section Committee, the European RDA Interest Group, and the BIC Library Metadata Group. And she's also the current chair of the UK Committee on RDA. And she's worked as a cataloger and for 20, over 25 years and is also an experienced trainer. So now we're going to hand over um, to Jenny, who's going to present for us. Thank you. Hello everyone. Hopefully you can see my slides and I can talk to you about um, the importance of standards and how BDS is involved as a cataloger with BDS and the sponsor of the Metadata and Discovery Group Conference I was asked to, to do this. So standards exist in many facets of life and they're much more than a baseline for quality so I wanted to talk about what that means with respect to metadata standards. They are key to presenting consistent information that allows libraries to manage the large volume of information in their catalogues. This is because bibliographic records based on the standards give us reliable content, content and when we use a standard, we gain the support of documentation, training and other resources not available to DIY approaches. This includes the ongoing development and maintenance of the standard, a very important aspect that I'm going to draw out in this short talk. The use of appropriate standards also ensures that your data is consistent with other organisations, which is particularly important in a world where resources are shared. I have heard people saying that adhering to a standard can feel a bit like being railroaded, but keep the benefits in mind. There will be situations in collections when the standard is not ideal, but outright rejection of the standard may result in you running a tourist attraction rather than a transportation service. I would also emphasise the benefits of international standards. It is possible to use adapters, but it is so much easier without. BDS metadata adheres to all of these current library cataloging and classification standards. Um, and the point really to make it today is that we don't just buy the schedules. We invest heavily in training of our staff, conference attendance, and most vitally in contributing to national and international committees developing standards and practices. The best users of our data are informed professionals and so we make our knowledge and expertise available though this is not an income generating part of the business. So BDS staff use and contribute to lots of different standards and organisations. Dewey Editorial Policy Committee, the European Dewey Users Group, UK Dewey Users Forum, UK Committee on RDA, the European RDA Interest Group, Metadata, Discovery Group and Cataloging and Indexing Group Scotland and a plethora of BIC committees, the Library Metadata Group Committee, Libraries Committee and Metadata Subcommittee, as well as various more specifically targeted panels and working groups, as well as the UK Onyx National Group. However, rather than just tell you all of the different committees BDS contributes to, I'm going to focus on a few to talk about their infrastructure and hopefully demystify some of it. The mark 21 exchange format is developed and maintained by the MARC Advisory Committee and there are representatives on that committee from the significant user groups and the British Library has a representative on that committee looking after UK interests. 
The UK community provides feedback to the BL Rep via the BIC Library Metadata Group. We give our opinion on the proposals for standard changes to the standard and discussion papers, which examine the best way to improve a particular field or subfield. So one that happened recently was this um, adding of a new subfield to the 310 field and then the change gets announced in due course. Sometimes changes are fast tracked if they're really straightforward and non-controversial but most changes are agreed or rejected at the meetings that MAC holds twice a year in January and June. Now this year all of that has happened online. Um, only a year ago all of those meetings were in person and they had already decided that one of the meetings per year could happen online but this year both of them ended up having to. The Dewey schedules are managed by the editors and we had our wonderful keynote speaker Violet Fox yesterday um, talking about this already but the editorial policy committee who normally meet in person once a year um, they their proposals for change are called exhibits. Um, these are publicly viewable and different user groups or even individuals can create an exhibit and lobby for change. And BDS contributes to this um, process and we're in a sort of interesting position to do so because of the cataloging and publication program, we actually see what new subjects are coming through and we can make a case for um, improving uh, subject provision in Dewey for certain things. So they get feedback from groups such as the European Dewey Users Group and the um, UK Dewey Users Group to identify areas of the schedules which need updating or indeed new subjects. Um, I would also recommend the blog, it's very entertaining if you're interested in Dewey. RDA, Resource Description and Access, is our current standard for descriptive bibliographic data. The International RDA Steering Committee works on the development of the standard and has a representative from each continent. So the European representative serves and reports back to the European RDA Interest Group and the UK has membership in EURIG um, with myself representing SILIP on that institution. So we have this sort of feedback up and down between the, the three layers um, so we can participate in feeding back to the steering group and also get um, the inside line on information coming out. Um, institutions wishing to join EURIG have to sign a membership agreement but there's no financial demand other than that of attending the annual meeting. Um, to discuss things within the UK, as I say, we have the UK Committee on RDA and I hope that you will join us for the RDA sessions on Friday morning this week. The Metadata and Discovery Group, previously known as the Cataloging and Indexing Group, has a UK level committee and a very active committee in Scotland, which is still technically called the Cataloging and Indexing Group Scotland, but I believe plans to change its name also. BDS contributes to both the UK and the Scottish committees, helping to nurture and support our professional community and having a great deal of fun along the way, I may add. The World Library and Information Congress was due to be held in Dublin this year and I had hoped that its geographical proximity would make it possible for many more UK librarians to attend. Sadly, of course, it had to be cancelled and of course, um, since it's an international event, we couldn't do with IFLA what we've done with the MDG conference and move it online because there's no equal way to hold an online event internationally due to the time zone differences. Next year's is planned to be in Rotterdam and then Dublin should get its turn in 2022. There are three IFLA sections of direct relevance to the metadata community, the cataloguing, bibliography and subject analysis and access session, sections. Each has a standing committee and it is my pleasure to be on the cataloguing section standing committee. Each World Congress involves business meetings which observers are usually welcome to attend and open sessions. The papers delivered at these open sessions provide insights from around the world, showcasing successful and interesting projects and looking to the future. I would say though that the real nitty gritty where stuff really happens is the working and review groups. Standing committees establish these task and finish groups to develop and review standards such as the IFLA library reference model. 
the International Cataloguing Principles and one that I'm currently involved in is the Multilingual Dictionary of Cataloguing Terms, also known as MULDICAT. It is possible to be a corresponding member of a committee which removes the cost of attending conference. User groups and committees are often looking for contributors and volunteers, so get involved for the benefit of your standards and with increased use of online meeting tools, it may be less time consuming and costly to get involved than ever before. EDS will continue to share and develop our expertise by contributing to various national and international committees developing these standards. And I will be very happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Jenny. That was that was great. Um, as I said um, in the introduction, we we value the work that BDS does in taking a lead and helping to develop the standards that are going to hopefully make our metadata robust and able to do the job that it's that it's supposed to do in terms of making resources accessible and discoverable. So thank you very much for that. That was a great run through of all. It was very much, very much a whistle stop tour. <laughs> <laughs> But it just shows you the depth, really, of the, the work, the breadth and the depth of the work that goes on and what has to be taken into account to ensure that metadata can do the job that it's intended for. So thank you very much for that. Pleasure. Um, I do have um, a question that's popped in, and this one is from Philip. He says, um, you mentioned Onyx. Does BDS work much in Onyx? And or would you say that an understanding of Onyx is useful for librarians? Uh, yes, we use Onyx a lot. The information that we um, take in from publishers is primarily in the form of Onyx. So um, this is used significantly with the cataloging and publication program. It used to be 25 years ago that we were sent lots of paper catalogues through the post and we would work our way through the, the selling catalogues of the various publishers and uh, catalog on the basis of that information. But now the information is all coming in electronically in the form of Onyx. Um, we pretty much have a separate import program for every single publisher that sends us Onyx data to try and get the best out of that particular data set because not all publishers apply it equally. Um, useful to a librarian? I'm not sure. There's definitely good information in there. So if that's the only data source you've got, rather than having to start from scratch, then yes, there could be a useful mapping to your database. But an awful lot of it is very book trade specific. So it will tell you how much the book weighs so that you know how much your carton of books is going to weigh so that you can work out deliveries and all those kind of book trade specific things. Um, so it depends on the use case. It's not, not useful, but I wouldn't say it's something that you should be definitely finding out about. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just check to see if there's any more questions. Um, no, I think that is it. So thank you very much, Jenny, for running us through all that. As you say, a tremendous amount of work going on. Happy to receive emails if anybody's got any specific questions that they think of later.